All right, welcome to another live problem solving exercise. In this particular position, it's black to move, and we're asked if black is equal, better, or winning, so we're operating on the assumption that black has a, an appealing position in some sense, and we're trying to figure out the magnitude of that advantage if he has one. Uh, I would assume that he is somewhat better at least because of this weakness on d4. Uh, I'm not a big fan of isolated pawns. They can confer some activity here, but with the same colored bishop here stuck passively on e3, it's hard for me to believe that white would have a quality. And of course, we're asked to provide a variation and a move to prove out our judgment of the position. So just on general posi positional considerations here with black to move, I would assume that black is at least a fair bit better because of the weakness of this pawn on d4. However, it certainly looks like there might also be a tactical solution uh, by which black may be able to win here. Uh, I'm not basing that on any particular move at the moment, but what I am noticing is some sort of looseness here with the rook on d1 for a start. Uh, it's pinned or oh, while well, the pawn on d4 is pinned to the rook, which means that this rook on c5 looks a little bit vulnerable to me. And it's got the rook on c8 and the rook on d5 kind of lined up on it. Also, this bishop has a beautiful diagonal, which suggests some tactical vulnerability along that diagonal. Um, things like captures on d4, um, the ideas of pushing something to e5 to take advantage of the pin. Maybe you're there. Uh, in general, I'm interested in moving the knight on c6, which may be able to um, open up ideas like uh, rook take c5. If I were to move the knight on c6, and then I were to play rook on the 8th rank next to the queen to take on c5, then I would immediately win the exchange at least if I had to go up the knight. So let's see if I can find a specific way to implement that idea. So I've got this knight on c6 that I want to move here so that I can play rook take c5. And the first thing I'm noticing is that if I move the knight, then unfortunately I'm running into this problem of rook takes uh, rook being check. So I can't do something like even if it was a conceptually good idea, I can't do knight takes d4 or knight to e5 because presumably because white would play rook take c8 check and then would take the knight. But maybe I have some specific tactical justifications. Let's think about this more concretely. So if I do something like knight takes d4 just to give us a move to start with, I'm loosening up the rook on c5 because I'm capturing that pawn on d4 and I'm opening up also the rook on the 8th rank to threat c5. And now if white were to play that rook capture c5 move that I was just discussing, there'd be some issues because after queen takes, the queen on b5 would be loose to the rook on d5 and also the knight on d4. And in that position it looks like black has at least won a pawn, and given all his other advantages, I would say that black should win the game. If black wins the pawn on d4 without compensation, I would say that black should be winning, um, although he'll have to be patient about it. So knight takes d4, first off, seems to make sense. Um, if rook takes c8 check, um, it would not be possible to capture on d4 with the knight or the rook because both would leave this rook on c5 under defended and so black would be able to take with presumably either rook and win the exchange. And what about bishop takes d4? After, uh, after knight takes d4 we have this move bishop takes d4. Doesn't look good to me just because uh, just because everything looks so loose here. And sure enough, if bishop takes d4, 
we have this move rook takes c5. And so in that position, again, because of the pin to the loose rook on d1, um, white would have no means of capturing back and we win at least in exchange. So to me, it looks like knight take d4 is at a minimum winning a good pawn from white. And after that pawn goes, in a lot of ways, white's very loose. It's hard to see how to defend against knight take f3 check, for instance, which will absolutely wreck white's kingside pawn structure. Um, there's also sometimes ideas of knight e2 check, and of course it looks like the knight should just be able to retreat, and after the knight goes back, the bishop is going to be just a monster on this long diagonal, and I, I don't see what white would have in that position. Um, so I think that it looks to me like knight take d4 is definitely the move, and before playing it I think it's good to do a blunder check, knight takes d4, and see if I'm missing any moves for white somewhere along the way. So first off, um, the rook on c5 is loose, as is the queen on b5, so for instance rook take d5 is not an idea, for among other reasons the fact that the knight can capture on b5, capture the queen. So knight takes d4, rook takes c8 we already looked at, rook takes d5 we just discussed, knight takes and rook takes we mentioned and they did not look good. Um, um, bishop takes, we said rook takes c5. I think this is just a winning position for black, I think knight takes d4 just does white in and tactically nothing works for white there. It just looks like to me everything is loose for white and he's been sort of poorly setting up his pieces and so I think that this makes perfect sense in this position. So this is essentially correct. Uh, as the authors note that even if black didn't have a tactical breakthrough here, and he does with the move knight takes d4 as discussed, he would certainly be better because of the isolated pawn, which we were discussing in the beginning. But because of the tactical stroke knight takes d4, it's clear that he's winning. And you can see the evaluations here. They're better than two pawns advantage to, uh, to black. One point that I didn't notice that is kind of nice that the authors point out is after knight takes d4 here if we play rook takes c8 check for white after queen takes c8 um, if the move queen a4 is tried pawn to b5 is particularly devastating and after that it's just extra curtains for for white he really can't struggle there so knight takes d4 really finishes the game it's a nice tactical shot there's no need to play positionally in this position and continue to work on the pawn on d4 since you can just win it comfortably here.